So the Holy Spirit is constantly putting you in position to take control of all of your financial rights, privileges, and powers all the time. As long as you listen to the Holy Spirit, you'll always come out on top. But you can't be afraid. You can't be fearful. Because um, with sowing, you're often playing the part of Peter. In sowing. And the Lord is always calling you out on the water. When you are a seed sower, you become Peter being called out on the water by King Jesus. And, and watch this here. As long as you protect your spirit, you protect your expectation, and you protect your sensitivity, your creativity, you'll make it to Jesus without sinking. Now, saints, imagine that King Jesus put money in water. Because remember, he put money in the fish mouth, and the fish mouth, the fish mouth was inside of the water. And so while he calling you out on the water financially, that's where all your finances really are. Especially the finances that restore your dignity. I want to talk to you about that real quick for about one minute. There's finances that restore you from shame. Finances that restore back your confidence. Finances that take you out of being a laughing stock. Finances that deliver you from um, looking cursed. Looking cursed. Finances that take you out of looking cursed. Finances that give you the persona of dominion. Finances that enrich your appearance make you start looking nice. Finances that destroys Pharaoh's presence in your life. Finances that destroys Pharaoh's presence. There is a, um, in Pharaoh's presence, it, it, it multiplies bondages. Bondage with anxiety, uh, bondage with fear, bondage with uh, mental things, bondage with sickness, bondage with uh, financial strongholds, all those different type of things. I never heard this a day in my life, but I just heard the Lord say this. There is a dimension of God's presence that's scheduled for you that he hides it in you sowing into your man of God. There's a part, an impartation, a part of God that he has locked up only when you sow it to your man of God. You'll receive it back and you'll walk in it. And, and, and it's special because you will know that that flow is in you when it's flowing through you. Because you... Because the, the, the spirit of your man of God will testify to you, that's me. You wasn't like that before. You, that's me. This is, this is what happens as you're honoring me, as you're sowing into me, as you're connected to me. That wasn't you before. Your mentality wasn't like that. Your goals wasn't like that. Your company wasn't like that. Your sanctification wasn't like that. Your holiness, your desire to be led by the spirit, ruled, dominated. Submit to rules, be peaceful, be respectful, be classy. That wasn't you in that dimension. Now, you probably attempted to do it, but now the attempt is now an anointed. See, one of the powerful things about apostolic soul, prophetic soul, is that your man of God does what you've been attempting. I'm trying to stop smoking. Then you end up stop smoking. I'm trying to stop being distracted. Then you end up focused. 
your man of God does what you was attempting. Because see, apart from your man of God, your attempts to be righteous is out of the law. And you know that you can't fulfill the law. That's why Jesus had to die. But when you step into your man of God's anointing and you let his anointing help you as you're sowing into him, as you're listening to him, now you step out of law and into the spirit, into grace. And, and that's why it says God is able to make all grace abound towards you, 2 Corinthians 9. All that grace is dealing with the fact that you're going to have more than enough abilities to dominate in this life, prosper, and never be defeated by any type of evil opportunity. Because, saints, evil opportunities is Satan's secret to distraction. Evil, evil opportunities. Um, and an evil opportunity is to divert the energy that you're investing into God somewhere else. If you start thinking about your bills and God telling you that he going to bless you and make you rich and make you wealthy. What your energy is being diverted from what the Lord is saying he going to do for you to something that. Right now, it makes you feel as if you're a slave to it. You see what I'm saying? Satan learned how to magnify and be a magnifier from God. So Satan is, is still trying to magnify stuff to make your heart sick. And God is magnifying stuff so that your hope won't be deferred. And, and, and so... What, what, what Solomon tapped into the prophetic and, and gave you a mystery that if you keep the hope from being deferred, the heart will never become sick. So now you understand why in John 14, King Jesus kept telling the disciples. Ask what you will that your joy may be full. Because that goes in line with let not your heart be troubled. See. The way that I stop the trouble in your heart is giving you a joy to be set before you. That's why John 14, 14 says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. The joy is being set before you so that the hope will never be deferred and then your heart will never be sick. If your heart is sick, Satan can create infirmity in your finances. If your heart is sick. If your heart is sick, then he can create infirmity in your money, in your provision. Guarding your heart with all diligence means that you, you're going to have to stay in the flow of all of your weapons from praise, thanksgiving, focus, Forgiveness, you're going to have to forgive people a lot. Even if you're driving on the streets, people will cut you off. They'll do all type of stuff. You could be inside of a store and somebody skip you. And they saw you right there and they skip. How many of y'all ever seen them people like that? And, 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 and say, when somebody skip you, all these thoughts come in your head. Y'all trick, y'all, I'll pull your braids out. I'll knock your ankles down, all the way down. I'll knock them down. I'm not even going to break them. I'll knock your ankles down. I don't know how I'm going to do it. <laughs> but I'm going to find a way to do it. Bless God. I'm going to find a way to knock your ankles down. I'm talking about even though they're in your socket, I'm going to knock them down till they come out your socks. I'm going to knock them from the socket to the out of the socks. I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to do it. And all type of thoughts come in your head. You don't see me. You don't see me. And all type of stuff just come in your head and, 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 and uh, it come in your head and you become impregnated with hatred. And you got to forgive people so quick. Because you sense the negative spirit that they have. Saints, and then you know when people do you do you do you run? They might cut you. Then they be proud. 
And then you're like, oh, you don't need to feel bad? You mean you don't feel bad that you didn't cut me off? And, and, and all this stuff going on. And then, for the joy set before you, I'm not going to mess up this flow I have with God. See, Wealth is God rewarding you for living a non-fleshly life. Wealth, divine wealth, is God rewarding you for living a non-fleshly life. Saints, people that listen to their flesh, they never become rich in the Lord. They never become rich because they listen to their flesh and their flesh never bring them into the true riches. You don't want to be like that. Don't listen to your flesh. Listen to the spirit of the Lord and the spirit always going to release you into calmness. How many of y'all was listening to those wisdom doors that I gave about calmness? It's powerful. I never saw calmness like that. Calmness is constantly intensifying favor with God. Because every time you come, you're telling God that I'm not a person that's led by emotions and feelings and conditions. I'm somebody that's led by only what you say. Saints, do you understand what powerful King Jesus said? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds our mouth of God. What he's saying is that I don't live by the fact that I'm hungry and I want to eat. I don't even eat because I'm hungry. I eat because the mouth of God is leading me where to eat, what to eat, where, if to eat. Wow. What King Jesus said, I'm going against the natural common schedule, the natural common routine. And I'm only going to listen to the spirit of God when the spirit of God moves me. So wealth is God giving you a reward for living a non-fleshly life. Not letting your flesh tell you what to do. Because the, the, the flesh will constantly tell you to do stuff that you're not supposed to be doing. And it's to injure you and knock back the plan of God to increase you. So Lord may be wanting to increase you and give you abundance, give you increase, give you wealth, give you overflow. And, 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 and. The flesh will always try to get you to do something that's going to mess up it from getting to you. Even if it's to argue with somebody that you never met before. Don't let them take you out of character. You're going to meet people like that. Saints, you can be inside of your car praying in tongues. Do you know that a demon will drive up behind you in somebody's car and you will feel the demon? I've had that happen to me before. And says, don't act like you don't get a thought. Well, just pull your gat out and shoot the nigger in the eye. That's all you got to do. Leave him with a ball patch in the eye. He don't need that other eye. He ain't using that eye for God no way. Just detach the eye out. Pop, pop. That's all we need right there. Pop out the sailor man. Him. That's all we need. It's not like that thought don't come to you. You think about it. Just pop you in the eye. Drive off. Who going to clarify anything? And you're driving and you have to keep on driving and you have to protect yourself from entering into the same energy that person is carrying. And saints, because, um, because you are a spirit, you was created to tap into the spirits that people be having, even though you don't even see them, you can sense their spirit out. 
And when you feel that evil presence, it is an opportunity for you to expose your maturity towards God. Demonic presence is a divine opportunity for you to show God that you're learning. Without the devil, God will never be able to clarify your sincerity. <laughs> I said, without the devil, God will never be able to clarify your sincerity. Do you know why there's going to be people that are full of the devil that are going to oppose your, your, your sanctification, your focus, your growth, your obedience, your surrender to God's perfect will for your life? Do you know why that's going to happen? Because without the devil, your purity, your sincerity, your clean motives cannot be confirmed. Wow. 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 So, 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 so sometimes there'll be days scheduled and, 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 and Satan say, let me send all of his exes, all of her exes, and let me have them right. Uh, let me send all of her BFFs and all of his BFFs. Let me send all of his family members and all of her family members. And you wonder why is it so heavy this week? Everything is so heavy. Because God testing you to see where you at with yours. <laughs> That's what he doing. He, he, God ain't removing the devil out the church here. Because that's how it's going to be confirmed that you really the church. What's going to be the confirmation that you really love God? When the opportunity to hate God presents itself and you say no. How are we going to know that you're a friend of God when the opportunity to be the enemy of God presents itself and you say no? How do we know that you believe God when the opportunity to doubt God presents itself and you still believe? How do we know that you're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might when the opportunity to be weak presents itself and you stay strong? How do we know that you honor God when the opportunity to rob God presents itself and you still sow? Ha! Glory to God! <laughs> Glory to God! Glory to God! Without the devil, there's no way to validify your born-again status. How are we going to examine your born-again status if things that are outside of being born again never oppose you. The things that oppose you is for you to even confirm I've been made change. Saints, a prophet and an apostle we expose people that really don't want the Lord. Because if you want the Lord and the Lord anointed me, why you got a problem with me for? You don't love the Lord? Well, yeah, I love the Lord. I did, I did, I did. Well, the Lord anointed me, so you don't love the Lord? Yeah, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Okay, I understand you love the Lord of the rings. The rings. That's what you love, the Lord of the rings. Jesus came down and told him, if you are Abraham's seed and you love the father, why are you trying to kill me? Because everybody that you saying that you love from God to Abraham, they all love me. So saints, what I'm telling you is that this whole earth is strapped with different strategies for God to confirm to you where your heart is. You see what I'm saying?
Saints, let me just say this to you. You ever met people like they 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 uh they probably started off with a man of God or a woman of God. It might be a man of God, woman of God. And then you 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 see them like they 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 disconnect from their man of God, woman of God. And then like you see them like there's a series of stuff that they do, bop, 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 bop. But it's like, what did you produce? Because truth be told, God be using a man of God or woman of God, whatever, whoever he sent to you, he used them to validify if you really belong to him or not. So when you disconnect, you can act like you belong to him, but it's like, what really happens to you? Like, did Jesus come in your room and said, I'm well pleased with you? Like, what happens? Like, like there's no follow-up story that, that what happens? Like, what happens? Like, like, what really happens to you that was so spectacular that confirmed to you that you right? You see what I'm saying? Did God show up? And, and talk to you out of a cloud? Did he? Did an angel show up and talk to you? Well, like, what, what, like what was your confirmation? There is no confirmation. <laughs> you go run around like a chicken with your hair cut off. You know why? Because the confirmation was the man of God. Saints. That's like you receive money from Western Union, right? They give you a confirmation number. You throw away the confirmation number, then you go to Western Union and say, can you give me another confirmation number? It's the same confirmation number we gave you. They don't switch the number around and say, okay, it was 33146. Now it's 33289. No, they give you the same confirmation number. You ever paid a bill and they say, I'm going to give you a confirmation number that your bill was paid. If you call back two days from now and say, I want a different, they're going to give you the same confirmation. Number. That was the confirmation that the bill was paid. And same way, the children of Israel, what you, what you think? It's Moses that brought them out because Moses was the one that God put there. So look, imagine the children of Israel. They listen, some of them listen to Korah. And Korah, Korah got swallowed up. Korah went to hell. Korah still burning up today. The demons up there making super fried chicken with them today. They cooking Korah and all of them. To, right now as I speak, Korah being cooked. Baby, the demons bringing them here, they're bringing them there. Saints, humility is the realization that hell is only for fools. And I'm not a fool, so I ain't going. So whatever I got to do, I'm going to do it because I'm not a fool. Humility is the realization that hell is for fools. It births your humility when you realize that hell is for fools. It's not for me. So why would I end up there? Why would I do what other people do? Because I'm not destined for hell. I'm not a fool. Saints. Who is more powerful? The person that lifts weights all the way to 100 and stops? Or the person that started lifting weights at 20 stopped and then started lifting weights all the way to 500? Parable. Parable. Think about it. Think about it. Who is more powerful? The one that lift weights faithfully all the way to 100 and stop. Or the one that lift weights all the way to 20, stopped. Then came and lift weights all the way to 500. Who's more powerful? Um, there's a, there's, there's anointings that God has, uh, he has sanctified for you. And those anointings are spec is specifically inside of your apostle. 
is inside of your apostle. And those anointings, the apostle teaches the word to you, but you take those anointings when you sow into the apostle. You take those anointings when you sow into the apostle. You receive, and, and watch this, the, the apostolic is to release you into the governmental wealth, the governmental benefits, the governmental restoration that belongs to you. The same way this world's government, they give you SSI and all these benefits, food stamp, uh, Medicaid, uh, uh, Obama don't care. <laughs> and, and, and they give you all these benefits the same way the Holy Spirit through the apostle enters you into all those benefits that you're supposed to have daily. Remember it says he daily loads you with benefits. You got stuff scheduled for you all the time. So why it don't get to you? That is connected to you discerning how to respond to your man of God that's carrying the beneficial authority anyway. Yes, you got beneficial authority, but it is unlocked through the apostle. Remember what Apostle Paul kept saying? He was saying, I'm not pressing y'all to sow, but because you sow. This is what God going to do to you. Because you discern that I was sent not to rob you. I was sent to restore you. I was sent back to get you out of the miry clay and bring you into the wealthy place. That's the purpose of why I'm here. Because, because everybody else looked at me as if I was Apostle Paul that was giving wisdom. But you looked at me as your financial deliverer. Therefore, you about to be delivered. Everybody else looked at, at it. This is a good preacher. Oh, he say some profound stuff. But because you saw me as a gate. A gate in heaven. Oh, my gosh. See, an apostle is a wealth gate. An apostle is a wealth gate. An apostle is carrying all type of wealth transfers through association. An apostle is a wealth gate. An association to an apostle will make you wealthy without any wickedness entering in. Because that's what happened with Abraham. He made Lot wealthy. Lot let wickedness enter in because he stopped the association. Saints, I promise you that Lot wasn't sowing no seed. I promise you that. Because once the seed is stopped being sown, so does the ability to stay connected. Because you're not connected to your man of God just because you decided to be loyal. Just because you decided to be committed. You connected to your man of God because you're doing the weapons of commitment and loyalty. You see what I'm saying? Since I met many people in my life, they didn't have the power to stay connected to me. Because they was robbing me. So it didn't matter how much I loved them. It didn't matter how much I tried to protect them. I couldn't protect them because they was a thief. And once you start robbing a man of God, you don't have the ability to stay connected to him. You, you, you schedule your own death. Saints, Lot was about to die several times. Look in the Bible. He was about to die when they arrested him, robbed him, and had him and his wife in their possession. They was about to kill the, the little boy. <laughs> I call him a little boy. Because he'll make foolish decisions. They was about to kill him. If Abraham didn't get the 318 men, they was going to cut his head off. Abraham went going to kill them before they killed him. If Abraham didn't do it, guess what was going to happen? Lot was a dead man. He was a dead man walking. 
Not only him, not only that time, look at when he made the wrong decision to go live in that place. Then God sent judgment to that place. Then he went to another place. The place caught on fire again. Lot was making a lot of dumb decisions, baby. <laughs> and, and watch this. Because he's not connected to his apostle. He didn't get to where he is. He didn't even know how to get a little bit to where he was by praying fasting. He got to where he was because of Abraham. Abraham mentored him. Abraham told him stuff that made him feel powerful. <clears throat> he feels powerful now. He goes solo and the devil is having his way with Lot. Saints, don't you think Lot was in sin? Yeah, he was in sin. Lot didn't have the power not to sin. Why? Because the power was broken through his apostle Moses. Saints, do you understand that God told Moses, you shall be a God over Pharaoh and Aaron? That's what Moses was working with, man. Moses, God said, I'm going to leave my position. And I'm going to put you there. You God. If they want to know what I'm saying, let them come to you and I'm going to talk to them. That's what God did with Moses. And Saints, Moses was the one that brought out all the children of Israel. Miriam experienced all that stuff. I'm getting tied up with Moses and Abraham right now because both of them, I'm, I'm, I'm jump, jumping here and there, so stick with me. Moses had brought out Miriam. He brought out Korah. All of them. Saints, what was so crazy was Korah was there. Korah understood that Moses had delivered the children of Israel from Pharaoh. So it was kind of crazy that Korah rose up and started challenging Moses. Because Korah needed Moses. Saints, if you look at life, all Satan gets you to do, he can't defeat you. He gets you to fight who is empowering you to defeat him. So that he can get you where he wants you to be and do what he wants with you. Think about it. Satan know that he can't defeat you. So he gets you to fight who giving you the supply to defeat him. So that you end up defeated. Because without the supply, you die. Saints, do you know I've seen it many of times. I've seen people, they have thought, hey, I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing. And then God say, how come you don't see you don't see that this person about to kill you. You don't see that this schedule. You don't see that 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 this destruction right here. How come you can't see all that? And saints, do you know what God does? People roam in the earth without no GPS. They don't know where they're going. They're just hopping all over the place like grasshoppers. Because he has hidden it in a person for their life. Do you know one of the most scariest things is this? That God won't talk to you if he's scheduled to talk to you through someone else and you left. He ain't saying nothing to you. And, and watch this. Your thoughts, even though it seems like it's led by God, it, it constantly leads you into all type of stuff that you don't even want to be ended up in. I've seen people, I've seen people in my ministry, they didn't want to listen to me. They ended up a man beating them down, beating them down like a dog. They not even the same person getting whooped like crazy. You didn't want Prophet Joshua to tell you nothing. God let you have your way. Now you with a dog, you, you with an actual demon, the man beating your brains out. 
knocking you out. I've seen that in the six years that, that I stepped into public ministry. I've been in ministry in this public arena for like about six years. I've seen that happen time after time. Boy, and I've scratched my head. I said, wow, is people, is people are right with going the wrong way and then all the bad stuff? Because there's no hedge. Satan constantly looking for a man or woman to leave their hedge so that he can do what they want with him. I knew of a girl in the ministry one time. I remember I, I, I ministered, the, the girl got delivered. She got delivered. She was free. The girl disconnected. I know she had disconnected because whenever people disconnect, they stop sewing. And she just disappeared. Stop sewing, then just disappeared. And saints, remember uh, Elisha said, did not my heart go with you? Remember he said that to Gehazi? Because us prophets, when you in our heart, our heart will go with you where you at. Our heart will go find you in your sin. That's how powerful a prophet is. A prophet is so powerful that we will locate what's going on that nobody knows about. We'll find you, whether you back on drugs or whether you back... In an abusive relationship, whether you back in deception, religiosity, tradition, whether you back in witchcraft, we'll find you. And, and, and one day I was minding my business and the, and the young lady came in front of me. I was right there in my rocker, in my, in my bedroom, and the young lady came before me. I wasn't thinking about the young lady or nothing. And she came right in front of my face. And God said, look at her right here. He said, the gates of hell has overwhelmed her. Her life is in shambles. He said, all the work that I had you do in her life, it has been undone. It's like you never even worked on her. She a totally different person. She done lost her identity. She done lost who she is. Saints, the young lady, all type of demons grabbed her in. Young lady lost everything she had. Now, mind you, I've seen many, not just this one. I've seen many people lose everything and become like nothing. And you're like, wow, was that really worth it? But since I was minding my business, the Spirit of God brought the person to my face. I wasn't thinking about them. I was minding my business. And I saw them come before me and God gave me a summary. He said, they done lost everything that you gave. The enemy just stripped it out of her. Got with a man, the man beat her brains out. Knock her out every single day. And then here's the sad thing. When demons destroy you through people, those people will actually laugh at you and say, look at them now. Even the person that the devil used know that they have an assignment to be used by the devil. We are all spirits. We are all spirits. And even though somebody may not be high in their spiritual sensitivity, people be knowing what they're doing after a while. They may not know at the first, but they'll know after a while. Saints, the last president that we had, when he got into office, he knew what he was doing after a while. He passed laws for homosexuals to be together, lesbians to be together. He passed all these laws. He, he, he was in the favor of the Muslims. Made sure that he sent billions of dollars over to the Muslim, the, the terrorist groups, all type of stuff. Supporting Iran, all of the enemies of America. He knows what he's doing. People that come in your life to destroy you, they know that they've been sent to destroy you. They looking at you like, do you see me yet? That 
person that keep on making you do stuff that God already prophesied to you not to do is the person that's looking at you and say, let me see if you know that uh, uh, who I am. I'm the serpent. I am the serpent. I've been sent by the devil to destroy everything that God is building in you. Because God already prophesied to you. Saints, I've seen people before God will say, thus saith the Lord, there's something coming right here. And when it comes, don't go to the left or to the right. And the stuff comes three months later, they go to the left or to the right. And it's like, wow. And they walk through the left or to the right and destruction hit them. And God had already told them months before. Because Satan is preparing someone to destroy you the same way God has prepared someone to deliver you. See, see, so, some of you all don't understand the same way God sends the prophet to prosper you. Satan is building up somebody to poison you. It don't just work in the way of God. Satan is counterfeiting everything God does. So the same way God sends someone to build you up, give you wisdom, there's somebody that's being raised up to give you wickedness and poison and deception. Saints, this is not new to me. I've seen it many a times. I, I've seen it many a times. Ain't nothing new to me. I've done seen it many a times. I'm just telling you that this spirit world, guard yourself. If you love you, protect yourself. Some of this stuff, not even just about loving God. Do you respect yourself enough to not be a footstool of Satan? Because that's not your destiny. There was never a demon that was ever supposed to rule over you as God's beloved. You are a royal priesthood. You was never supposed to be devalued. Lose your treasure. I've seen many people. I've seen many people. Pride. Pride is so dangerous. Because pride makes you feel like you know what's right. But then your whole life goes wrong in the end. You see what I'm saying? Pride makes you feel like I know what I'm doing. But then... At the end, you don't even know who you are no more. You not, a, not only know what you're doing, you don't know who you are. You lose your identity. The more you sin against God, the more you lose your dignity, your image of God, your likeness of God. It dies off. Saints, you think different when you're in the spirit. When you're in the flesh, you think a certain way. When you're in the spirit, you think different. Saints, I'm talking to you about this because if you're going to be a wealthy woman or a wealthy man, you're going to have to really be sincere with God. You're going to have to really be in the place where, where Jesus' desires is, is, is your goal. That's going to have to be your number one aim. The mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There's so many people playing with God. They're playing with God because they can't hear his voice. They lying. Well, God gave me a word today. And here's what the Lord said. He does not call the qualified. He qualifies the call. <laughs> now this is too deep for some of y'all. This is too deep for some of y'all. See, some of y'all didn't even catch it. See, some of you are, see, that, that's what happens. See, 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 and, and see God trying to bring you up to another level so that you can catch what I'm saying. He don't call the qualified. I'm going to say it real slow. He qualifies the call. That's what he does. All right. I'm going to tell you this right now. And see, there's this about three of y'all that's catching what I'm saying, but the other y'all, y'all don't got no prayer life. Y'all don't understand
Saints, there's so many people playing with God because they left their nest. All you can do when you leave your nest is clown around. Your nest is where your sound mindedness is, your conviction is, your discernment, your holiness, your righteousness, your favor, your power, your anointing, your freedom, your liberty, your wisdom, your knowledge. When a bird leaves its nest, a bird can fly into its own demise. A hunter will shoot it right there in plain broad, plain, uh, plain daylight. Broad daylight will shoot him. Because that bird just flying. The bird just flying. Shh, shh, shh. But the bird not flying where the nest is. There's no protection. And, and the shooter. Now mind you, I don't shoot like that for real. I just had to do it. <laughs> now I, I, I'll get the chest for real. I got aim for real. But I'm doing the demonstration. Paya. You understand that that that's that's something completely different. That ain't real life. That ain't that ain't how we you know talk so. Shoot. Saints and never let somebody cross eyed hold the gun when y'all trying to fight back. This shoot, this shoot! Pow, 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 pow! Man, let go, let go, let go! Hey, 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 hey! Get the gun, get the gun! Hey, wait, 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 pow, pow! They fighting against you. I see him. I see him. I see him. No, you don't see him. You don't shot at me twice. They over there. Where was you when the fight we jumped on? I said they over there. He done got the gun on him. Pow, pow, pow. Hey, hey, hey. Over here, over here. They over here. You never give somebody a, the gun that, that got cross eyes because they're going to shoot. They're going to air it out on the wrong side and shot you. you trying to explain your wounds. You don't even know what to do. They're going to shot you by the side of your face. Then saints, something about a gun, a gun when you shoot it, it got a kickback. So if you don't know what you're doing, it might not be work out too good for you. Some guns got heavy kickback. So when you, it's going it to kick you right, right back. You might drop it. The thing that flew up in the air. <laughs> you know, 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 you Saints, when you're in a white neighborhood and you hear a gunshot, you know Billy Bob done killed his mom. <laughs> you know it. Like, you ain't even got a guess. And then you hear the ambulance. Wee, wee. You just lock your door. I, let, me, let me make sure I lock my door. Cause I know Billy Bob on his way over here. Billy Bob don't like black people. I know how I know, know y'all. Since it's funny, as the election going up, you start seeing all type of people like they starting to pit out who they voting for. My whole block got Trump on it. Now, on the other side, we see Biden and Pent, uh, Biden and uh, uh, Hillary off of French Prince of Bel Air. Since Joe Biden looked like one of those people that like you you don't want them to 
you don't want them to to drive to the store because you don't know when they're coming back. Like, <laughs> like if you're trying to get some milk on your cereal, like your cereal, you're trying to get some milk. Like you got the Frosted Flakes, you got the you got whatever you got. Some of y'all like it, Lucky Charms. <laughs> Some of y'all like Lucky Charms. I don't know why. Some of y'all like the Captain Crunch. Uh, if you're over there, then you like uh, what they call it. Cinnamon Toast or whatever they call it. Or whatever. Wheaties. <laughs> but he looked like somebody, if you if you wanted something real fast, like, man, I forgot ketchup. Can you just go down the street and get the ketchup? Like, you know, you know, joke. Like, no, nah, don't let him go. No, 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 no. You go, you go, you go. Since I'm kind of shocked that some people even vote. I, I, I'm shocked that, like, even if, even if, even if you're not saved, even if you're not prophetic, like, why would you vote for somebody that look like they're struggling with their own decision making? Like, why would I pit the nation in your hands if it look like you don't even know? <laughs> you don't even know where your socks at. How you going to find out where the hot spot of the nation is, the victory of the nation? It look like you can't even find your, 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 your dentures. You. Saints, when, when older people in love, they start putting their dentures in that glass. You got to be careful what glass you pour your water in because you smell something funny. <laughs> says that it expires next month. Why it smell like this? Like, why it smell like that? You drink it out the glass. You don't know, you don't know that. It's all. <laughs> and, 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 and you don't you don't just pick up a cup and drink it. You got to make sure that the cup is empty. Because if you see some white shells in there, nine times out of ten, them some... Them some <laughs> Your your child your child go pick up the the glass to go drink. You be like, no! Hey! Since if you ever had children, you gonna have to yell at them to save them from their own stuff. And say some of y'all, you got them children that won't play outside. The car be coming. They trying to jump in front of the car. Talk, so let me see what I can do with it. And since when you discipline your child, and all that prettiness just go. You just, no, <laughs> no, uh-uh, no, um, no, we can eat whatever you want. Yeah, I just, I just want to eat whatever, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. When the child comes, yeah, you pick, pick up. The child, the child don't know if to run, to spin your child up there trying to get away from you. <laughs> you done, you done, you done chased your child all over the house, got your child in the head like your child trying to get free. Your child trying to tell the man, hey, you don't know, she crazy. Hey, you don't know. The child trying to tell people, trying to tell people. Your child be driving in the back to some help me. <laughs> your, your, your child got the phone trying to text on the phone, trying to put a sign up on the window. Help me. What you doing back there? Nothing. Nothing. That apostolic association was so amazing for Lot because it, it brought him into wealth, but it also brought him into wisdom 
of how to rightly divide that wealth without ever becoming proud, without ever becoming a slave to that wealth. And he forgot all of that when he disconnected from Abraham. And see, the 318 men were so powerful because after he saw the extent that Abraham did to deliver him, he, he, he realized, oh man, what, what was I doing? I, because saints, Lot had to end up in that situation to finally see I really don't know what I'm doing without Abraham instructing my life. I need his words. I need his teachings. Now, saints, I want to say this to you. You know how I read Matthew 1.1? 1, 1? It said that Jesus, the son of David, the son of Abraham... Now you know why the Bible calls you the seed, the sons of Abraham in Galatians 3, in Galatians. Now you know why it calls you the seed of Abraham. Because King Jesus was Abraham's seed. You became Jesus in the spirit. So how he was Abraham's seed, you have become Abraham's seed now because you have become Jesus in the spirit. Listen, once you realize that you have become Jesus in the spirit, you'll be tempted in all points, yet you won't sin. Oh my gosh. See, once you realize that you're Jesus in the spirit, you'll drink of the cup that he has given to you. You'll take up your cross and follow him. You'll go to another dimension. You'll go to another dimension. I said you'll go to another dimension. Glory to God. Friday night at eight is going to be so great. Great, 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 great. Friday night at eight. Got myself a day. It's going to be so great. Great, 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 great. Great, 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 great. All the old school songs went just like that, ain't it? <laughs> hey, all the old school songs. Went, went, went just like that. In it, in it, in it. All the old school jams. All the old school jams went just like that. I don't know. I understand why everybody was doing wild stuff because all the music was crunk. It was turn up music. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody and their mama was up there crunk. Nobody want to listen to God. They're crazy behind. Everybody was up there drunk with, with distractions and niggledom, niggledom. All of that. It was so much niggledom going on. That's how I, that's that's how I was. All the time. Shoo. Shoo. Oh, there every minute. That's how music just went on like this. It just, it was coming. All the music was like this here. Everybody looked like they was out hiding behind your bushes. Everybody looked like they was hiding behind your bushes. This is this, this exactly how it went. The music. That's how I went, just like that there. It was, and, 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 and then it was always that older woman that thought that she still had it. So. And she thought she had it. She 
Tiana done came on here. <laughs> I had to turn it down because of... <sighs> Glory to God. Glory. <laughs> hey, and the brother always come out. He always come out with it, with his, and he always got his cigar. And that's how he come out, just like that. There, he just come out there like this. Cause, cause he got, he got to pay the ballet man. Babies, just listen to that song. Just, just the instrumental. Get you. ever meet a deacon that didn't smoke. I mean, one time I was preaching, so I, I was on my way to go preach somewhere, and the deacon was driving me, and he said, hold on, prophet, I gotta pull over real quick. We pulled over at a gas station. I'm thinking that he gonna go buy some hot dogs. He ain't gonna take a smoke break. <laughs> he ain't gonna take a smoke break, and what made it so bad was he had to go buy more cigarettes inside of the doggone gas station. 
I was like, I know I'm not going to be anointed today because this, this, this is already going left. Glory to God. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> let me let me go here. Let me go here. Now we dealing with something. As a matter of fact, let me swap it into. Uh, I'm gonna go to Proverbs chapter twenty one. I'm going to take a turn real quick because I told everybody to study that. So I'm going to pull this out real nice. Proverbs chapter 21. Look what it's saying, verse 2. Uh, verse 1 says that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. The revelation to this is, is this. The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. So here's what I want you to see. It was by Apostle Paul's hands that God did signs and wonders. So the hands represent a place of works, giftings, abilities, what you have to understand that when the king is giving his heart to you, he's teaching you how to move in all of God's hand, all of God's abilities. How could I say that without being so offensive? Yeah. That word, that word, it, it got a lot of meaning to it. But if I said it, you, you, you would, it, it would make you stumble a little. And so the king's heart, what he speaks to you, what comes out of his heart is to bring you into God's abilities, his graces, his power, his wisdom, all of his hand. All of God's hands is revealed out of the king's heart and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if his heart is wrapped up in God's hands, when you listen to what the king is saying, you step into the hand of the Lord, which is supernatural functionality. Now, you know why the queen of Sheba went to the next level. Because of supernatural functionality. That's why Mary Magdalene discovered her real supernatural self. Because King Jesus was releasing the hand of God. Remember, when Jesus was casting out devils, he said, when they said that he was a devil, he said, either you right or this is the finger of God. So God was fingering people's life with the miraculous. That, that didn't come out too right. <laughs> but look, King Jesus is dealing with the hand. King, Je <laughs> King Jesus is dealing with the hand. Watch this here. He's saying, <laughs> he's saying that the miraculous happened via the hand. The finger. You see what I'm saying? But how does he does this? Because the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. So because King Jesus' heart is in the hand of God. It is the hand of God. King Jesus is bringing everybody he meets into the abilities of God's hand. So he asks Philip, where are we going to find food to feed all these people? But Philip can't catch that the king is giving him an opportunity to move in the hand of God that the king has been moving in all along. 
See, the king had already multiplied, turned water into wine, done open blind eyes, done healed the sick and raised the dead. He had already did all that. So he's given, given Philip a disguised door. A disguised door to walk in the ability of the hand. My God. Isn't this glorious? Prophet Joshua Holmes special. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 1. Look what the Bible says. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithsoever he will. So the king's heart is the will of God to your life. He said, God said that he turns his heart whatsoever he wills. So the decision that the king is making, it is what God wants. He pits, watch this, and as the rivers of water. As the rivers of water. Now let me clarify this. Every man has a king in him. And every man can bring you into a kingdom. But you got to know which kingdom it is. All of the women at the wells, men have brought her into the kingdoms of Satan. The woman at the well. So... She has stepped into kingdoms, but wrong ones. So I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with uh, Jesus kings here. I'm talking about kings that come out of Jesus. I'm talking about the, the blood of Jesus kings. Yeah. Glory to God. His blood has made us kings. With eagle wings. I just added on that last part. It's not in the Bible. Don't look for it, baby. Look for it. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. As the rivers of water, watch this. He said that he's going to turn the heart of the king as rivers of water. Now, saints, what did King Jesus say? If you believe on me, as the scripture have said, out of your belly, John chapter 7, shall flow rivers of living water. Look what God says about the king's heart. As rivers of water. What he's saying is, is that there's Holy Spirit mantles that I take this king's heart to operate in for you. So this king's heart operate in love. This king's heart operates in joy to bring you laughter. You see that all the time. God, take me down the, 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 the river of joy just so you can laugh. Take you down the river of warning so that you can be convicted. Take you down the river of mysteries so that you can stay focused. The divine exchange for mysteries is focused. The divine deposit of mysteries is focused. The burning bush is a mystery to Moses, but it creates his focus. <laughs> yeah. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 Jesus rising on the third day to the disciples is fascinating to them, but it creates their focus. Thomas, Thomas is proof that you could be in the presence of Jesus and ask the wrong questions. Tom, the first thing Jesus does when he sees Jesus rise from a historical fulfillment of Bible prophecy that prophets Thousands of prophets are talking about 
this coming of the Lord. And the first thing he tells him, can I see them holes in your hands, boo boo? Because I'm not going to believe unless he show it to me. I'm not just going to take his word. Like Anybody can come tell you that they died and rose again. I need to see them holes in your hands first. I need to see them have holes in your double two bumps on your helmet. I need to see them holes in your feet to see if it's real. I just need you to take your sandals off, Jesus. I need to take your, just take your sandals off. I just need to see if them toes, if them toes really got holes in it. Them toes got holes in it. The first question, you ought to slap them. Thomas, that's, that's the first thing you're going to ask the true and living God when he rises from the dead? To show you that he really did rise? You looking at him right in his face. Well, Thomas didn't see him yet. And Thomas said, I want to see, I want to see all that stuff. But if the other disciples saw him, if Mary saw him, that should be enough for you. Why you need to see evidence after all of that? So, so he's in the presence of Jesus by asking the wrong questions. Now, since Jesus showed him, but do you really think that Jesus will go and trust Thomas? And a lot of stuff. No, Thomas is showing that he got a little, he got a little, um, he got a little doo-doo in the brains. That's doo-doo brains. Doo-doo, you got doo-doo braids, but it's doo-doo brains. It doo doo-doo. Doo-doo brains. Doo-doo braids. It got doo-doo braids, but it doo-doo brains. Brains. It's not braids, brains. Two different things. You got to, Clarify, you got to speak it correct. Not braids, brains. Brains, brains. I'm talking about brains inside, not the braids. The braids on top, the brains underneath. Both of them not compatible. They did on different sections, different sectors. Different, 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 different places, different geographies. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 22 says, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. God is looking at the root of your decision, not the fruit of your decision. That's Proverbs chapter 21 verse, verse 2. Every way a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. God is looking at the root of your decision, not the fruit of your decision. So, so. Martha is saying, Lord, I'm doing all this stuff. That's the fruit. But the root is, tell Mary that she needs to do what I'm doing. So it's a wrong spirit. Why are you commanding Jesus? Since Martha had lost her mother loving mind, <laughs> she, she, she was in Jesus' face and told her, go tell her that she needs to start doing what I'm doing. She told the creator of the universe that. So Martha, in her head, she thought that her works was right, but then the wrong spirit was revealed by the presence of Jesus. Jesus said, no, you, 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 you're, not, you're not doing nothing for me, baby. I got to show you what I want done for me. Martha, Martha was evidence to quicken you as a child of God to never, never just follow your heart. Never follow. Are you catching what I said? How, how many of y'all could write down that wisdom door for me? I, I need just, I need 21 of you all to write down. Never follow your heart. I'm about to show you something. Never follow your heart. We about to close in five minutes. I'm about to be finished in five minutes. Never follow your heart. Never follow your heart. Remember that wisdom door for the rest of your life. Never follow your heart. Never follow your heart.
Never follow your heart. Never follow your heart. Watch this here. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 26. Proverbs 28 verse 26. Look what it says here. He who trusts in his own heart is a fool. And watch this. Your heart is where you get wounded. Your heart is where you get broken. Your heart is where you experience pain, offense, bitterness, wrath, envy, jealousy, hatred, impatience, anxiety. You notice that this is what the heart all accumulates. And look what it says. He who trusts in his own heart is a fool. If you trust your own heart, you're a fool. Never trust your heart. Never follow your heart. I said something powerful on my Facebook page. I said that your memory has two things. Trash and treasure. But wisdom locates. It locates what magnifies God. Wisdom, it, magnif it, it, it locates what magnifies God. Everybody's memory has the totality of their life in it. But good understanding only locates the parts of your life where the Lord was able to reign supreme. Whether it be that you had a day where you had made a decision to be peaceful, kind, attentive. You wanted to learn about the Bible. You wanted to seek to memorize scriptures. You wanted to pray in tongues, is it real? You wanted to lay hands on the sick. You wanted, to, you wanted God to use you and position you in his will. Everybody's memory has trash and treasure in it. And every time you choose to take care of God with your decisions, your giving, your attentiveness, and your servanthood, and your mercy towards others. Guess what? That, that's a sign to you. Guess what? Now, the spirit of the Lord starts to purge you of all of the trash. Saints, acts of love remove memory of hate. Acts of kindness destroy memory of revenge. Acts of patience, it destroys memories of pride. Because pride wants to do things when it wants to do it, how it wants to do it, and without any divine instruction, managing it. Pride just wants to go and fulfill it the way that it wants to fulfill it without any divine guidance, restrictions, demands, or instructions. That's why your fruits of the spirit destroys the works of the flesh. And if you're moving in divine fruits, you fire what you hired when you was distracted. You fire what you hired when you listen to your heart. Wow. That's why Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Because your heart is often a magnet for trouble. Wow. 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 This, 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 wow. This, wow. 
He said, let not your heart be troubled because your heart is often a magnet. It always connects you to trouble. Your heart will tell you about somebody that's not even thinking what you're talking about and tell you that person don't like me. Your heart is constantly linking itself to trouble. If there's no trouble, your heart will find it. You ever had, if you ever had children, you're going to have to tell your child many of times, leave that alone. Leave that alone. Leave that alone. Just leave it. Just leave that alone. Don't touch it. Leave that alone. Why do you have to tell them? Because the heart is attracted to trouble. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Your heart is constantly looking for trouble. And if your heart doesn't see any trouble, your heart actually gets anxious for why it doesn't see any trouble and starts seeking out trouble. And deception is even when Satan makes something look like it's trouble and it's not even trouble. <laughs> Saints, Saul is the king. He's powerful. He's anointed. Samuel took him up on the mountain. Gave him a, a, a VIP dinner with him. He's eating with Saul. Everything is good. They are in a special place of relationship. The Bible said that when Saul turned away from him, he became another man. So, so Saul became another man. How does he rebel against God and step into witchcraft? Because his heart magnetized trouble. Samuel says, kill all the Amalekites. His heart said, let me search out a way for me to preserve the Amalekites. And why should I kill all of them? They ain't did me no nothing. Saints, are you catching this? Saul, his heart went go find trouble when he was in the double. Saints, Adam, him and this woman is the richest people on the earth. They got power to speak to the fish and the fish understand the communication. They got power to speak to the eagle and the eagle up there flying and understand every word they speak. Ho, 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 ho. They got power to speak to the lion. And the lion said, ah. And the lion come up next to him and sit down. He tell the lion, sit next to me. The lion go sit down. He said, the lion go stand up. The lion go stand up. He got power over the whole animal kingdom. The woman comes out of him. She got the same power that he has. She's a glory carrier with all of the grace and the power and the mysteries and the presence of God. And her heart goes and finds trouble. Saints, what I'm telling you is that your heart is a magnet for toxic curiosity, for dangerous desires. For appetites that are assassins. So what the word of God say here? What the word of the Lord say here? In Proverbs chapter 28 verse 26. He who trusts in his heart is a fool. Because your heart is the headquarters of disloyalty. What did God say to the prophet? The heart is deceitfully wicked. Why didn't it say that the heart is wicked? Because wicked means that it's twisted. It said that it's deceitfully wicked. Meaning that even when it is twisted, it will still find a way to convince you that it's not. <laughs> I got to go, man. I got to go. I've been preaching for a long time. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's deceitfully wicked. So, so saints, if we hear, 
If we hear deceit fully, if we don't look at how it's spelled, we hear the term seat. The heart is deceitfully wicked because see the heart, it thinks that it's sitting on a throne with God. But Satan is enthroned. The seat of Satan is operating, but it'll convince you, no, you with the throne of God. You with God's will. You, and it's the seat of Satan. And saints, watch this here. It's deceitfully because even when it's wicked, it, it'll twist you and say, I'm still seated in the heavenly places in Christ. I'm still God's beloved. I'm the, still the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the lender and not the borrower. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. God about to do amazing things in my life. Baby, God about to increase me more and more. I'm anointed. I'm about to, I'm about to reach the world with the gospel. I'm hot, man. I'm, I can't be stopped. I'm full of power. I'm full of glory. It's deceitfully wicked. It's so there's a seat still operating inside of your heart to make you believe that you're in the heavenly places. Saints, the grass is greener on the other side. You know why? Because snakes don't want you to discern that they're inside there. The snakes want you to be so fascinated with the beauty of the greenness that you forget that they inhabit that grass. 